Alright, hey everyone. I am doing a little bit different of a style video. This is for CC Johnny. I've done a smock version, but this is going to be a non-smock version, kind of in a low-key setting, um, walking you through how to do it. My kiddos, my iron is just heated up. My kiddos are at the park with my husband, so I should be able to blaze through that with, with this without any distractions. So with CC Johnny, it's a very, uh, like it, it's a quick little make. Um, you're going to have your rumper front. This is, again, for the non-smock version. I do already have one for the smock version. So this is non-smocked. You're going to have two of these cut out on the fold. You're not going to have to worry about any sort of insert because, like I said, we're not doing the smock version. So you're going to have, um, did I say two cut out on the fold? You're going to have four that are not cut out on the fold. Did I just say that? Oh my goodness, and I don't even have kiddos around. Anywho, so you're going to have four of these. Two are going to be your like garment fabric, and then two are going to be your lining fabric. Now, CC Johnny is fully lined, so it can be, quote, reversible depending on how you do your closures. I am using uh, this Italian cotton um, for one side and then I'm using this uh, like kind of charcoal color um, corduroy. Feather rail corduroy is one of my favorite favorite fabrics for excuse me for like the fall time. It's a great transition you can layer it um, you know with long sleeves or whatever for and a coat for the winter and then if you're a little one if you luck out um, you can kind of still squeeze them into it for the spring as you're getting that like kind of that you know transition back into the warmer weather. Anywho, so what you're going to do, it is fully lined, so you're not going to have to worry about any sort of like French seams or anything like that. You're going to take one of these, so this is your back because it has the longer um, strap to it, and you're going to put them right sides together, and. You're going to do the same thing for the front as well as the back, right sides together, and you're going to sew along this crotch seam, okay? You're not going to sew down the leg, you're just going to sew from the top, um, like, across until the, you get to that crotch. Um, So there's one. You're going to do repeat the same thing for the other three sections. So you've got one more section for this, or I have one more section for this corduroy again, right sides together. And then I've got two sections for my Italian cotton, which I'm going to call my lining. Um, with CC Johnny, you really, you really can't get away without doing that lining. It, it, it's how we're going to um, get all of our edges around the corner. You'll see in a second. I think CC Johnny is great. Um, it's a great little make for boys as well as girls. And the one that I have the tutorial on the smock version was for Audrey. Um, and it's just all the what fabrics you choose and your embellishments and everything. It's just like a little jumper, you know, like a little overall. Here's the third one. I did push. Oh crap. Sorry, I didn't realize that that camera was so far off. I had it all lined up. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. So there's all four of them. So now I'm going to take all four and I'm going to iron them. Let me just check that this camera's still going. One day I'm going to have a sewing space that's all decked out. And one of the things I'm very excited about with that sewing space is that it is um, going to be set up for filming to make that easy. So what I like to do around these corners, or around the curves, is just to put a little bit of clips and that way it helps the fabric kind of relax around the curves and lays nice and flat. 
But yeah, my sewing space, as some of you may have, may have known if you follow us, um, we have another YouTube channel. And uh, we have, right now we're living in a little bit of a shoebox for our <laughs> growing family. But you can see my sewing space is a little bit of a mess. It's a little bit of a hot mess. But um, we do own land that's closer to the Asheville area, and we are going to be building on it as soon as our house in Florida sells. We still own a home down there, long story short, and it's for sale. As soon as it sells, we're going to take those proceeds and invest them into our family home, which is really exciting. Um, it's going to have a massive sewing space, kind of like... Uh, all encompassing like for everything from you know fine sewing fine handwork to quilting to everything in between um, classes being able to film really well I love the idea of having like just boom arms from the ceiling and not having to deal with the tripods and all of that jazz but um, yeah definitely a long time coming It is so rare that I get to sew like this, and it is so nice not having the little ones at your feet. <laughs> and if you do use corduroy, um, friendly reminder to make sure that you follow that nap when you cut out your pieces. Basically, you're just going to kind of pet your fabric. And whichever way feels right, that's the way that you want it to be on the body. So you want to be able to pet from like top to bottom <laughs> and have the nap go flat down. You, you don't want it to ruffle up. Now with other, like with fabrics that don't have a print, you can use less fabric for CC Johnny because you can turn the pieces on the cross, uh, I didn't want to sneeze. You can turn those pieces on the crosswise grain and kind of luck out. You can basically use around half the amount of fabric so you can get some other stuff in. So we've got all of our pieces ironed. Is it still? Okay. We've got all of our pieces ironed. Um, again, the one with the short uh, straps, that's your front. And then the one, you can see the comparison. The one with the long straps is your back. Um, it doesn't matter which at this point, you're just going to pick one of these side sections, sides, side, sides, blah, side sections, one of these sides and put them together because you're going to sew one of the side seams together. It doesn't matter which at this point, just pick one and sew it together. So I'm going to do that. Right sides together. I know that CC, um, uh, CC. I know that children corner patterns like to use like a quarter inch seam allowance for most of their stuff. Um, I prefer at least a three eighths, if not a half inch. So if you're curious as to why I'm doing that, that's why. It really, as far as children's patterns goes, it really doesn't matter that much as long as you're consistent. Um, I know that some people are going to disagree with me, but they've put in. Uh, Children's patterns are generally so easy to fit. So as long as you're consistent, and the consistency is important, so your seams line up. Okay, so I've picked, I've just put one side in. Like I said, it wasn't, uh, it doesn't matter which one. But you want to do the same the same side for your other pieces, all right? So you're going to put, in my case, I've got, um, I'm going to put right sides together, right? So the right side of this is facing up and the right side of that is facing down. Right sides are together. Those are my backs. This is a very easy way so you don't mess it up. Um, then you're going to have, again, right sides together. These are my two fronts with right sides together. This is how you know that you need to put this seam together, these sides together. So don't put these ones together because then you won't be able to do our next step. So I'm put all of your pieces right sides to facing each other and then whatever seam, side seam that is, you put that side seam together. And then you won't get backwards on yourself. I'm going to 
going to iron those side seams open. Okay, so now we're gonna put right sides together. Well, okay, here is a part, I'm actually gonna put some piping on it. And you are more than welcome to skip the piping, as particularly if you're like a brand, brand spanking new beginner. You may want to skip the piping, which is not meant to be discouraging, but if you are trying to figure out um, enough things, you might wanna figure out kind of more of the basics and then come back to piping. Um, piping is not terribly challenging but as a beginner it might throw you off and it might be a little bit discouraging um, until you get some more practice under your belt so just just that sounds horrible <laughs> I'm not I'm really not meant trying to be discouraging at all but um, give it a whack if uh, if you are getting discouraged by your results just give it some more practice. Like don't don't you don't have to do everything all at once. You know what I mean? Um, any rate, I don't know if that came out right or not. But I'm gonna take this piping. This is um, going to go from. Where am I? I keep freeing to switch this camera. Okay. So I'm going to take this piping and it's going to go all the way around the neckline. I'm personally not going to put it on the, on the legs, but you definitely could. Like I said, more than welcome to skip this part. I'll have the timestamps in the description box below as well as all of the stuff and the materials like I usually do for my sewing tutorials. Whenever I come up to a corner on piping, I like to put in some clip marks. Let me go a little bit more so I'm in frame. So I'm coming up to this corner. I'm just going to put a clip mark kind of where I think the corner is, a little bit, one a little bit ahead, and I want a little bit behind. So I've got three total, and that seems to work well for me. Um, and then I just sort of bend it around like so. And I'm just, I'm being careful that this, this edge is staying in line with my fabric. So I take it up and, you know, needle down and I'm going to turn around. And now I'm concerned with this line, you know, this edge of the piping being in line with my fabric. So something like that. And again, I'm going to put clip marks as I approach all of these corners. So here we go with the next one. Farmhouse also has some um, box pleat, not box pleat, knife pleat. It might be box pleat. Um, they've got some pleated trim that is really darling. They also have that uh, pico edge thing. Something just turned off. Oh, these cameras. They all have their quirks to them. I sure hope I'm in focus on this camera. This camera here, the viewfinder doesn't flip around. And so what other people do who have this camera and film on it, other YouTubers, or whoever, as they put it onto a monitor so they can see, or they have a camera person. I don't have either of those. <laughs> I'm sewing in enough of a shoebox that I don't need to add a monitor to my setup. Kind of makes me chuckle when I get comments about um, not having enough space to sew or, or whatever, and I'm like, Particularly with my Jack sewing series, I got a couple comments that people were saying that um, one of the downsides to an to a industrial sewing machine is the space it takes up. And I'm like, you know, um, I think it takes up less, well, I, I guess maybe comparable space to um, a regular, you know, household domestic sewing machine. Because you're going to need a table regardless. 
Um, yeah, so, I don't know. are done with the piping again very much an optional step um, and go ahead and try it if you if you want um, but don't I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be discouraged if um, it's your first time doing piping and I might make it look a little bit easier than than it is there is a little bit of a learning curve to it so don't I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be discouraged if it just like doesn't come together um, because it's not the trickiest thing. You can do it, um, but I I've been told that I make it look easier. Um, not to say I'm like an expert or nothing, but I've been told that I make it look easier than it is. I don't know. So I don't know if I'm getting that out right. I'm definitely not trying to brag about myself, but just like don't be discouraged is what I'm trying to say. All right. So at this point, we've got our piping on here. We are going to take the lining part and put it right sides together if you skipped your piping again no problem but we are going to put uh, lining side right sides together with your garment fabric and I do like to use a couple pins in this area so or in this step so like I'll line up you know this the seam for the back I will line up the seam for that uh, side that side seam and I'll put a pin and then I'll line up the seam for that center front and I will put a pin there as well and then um, I will go around and I will line up the straps I do think it's worth the time to put the pins in on this step so like here I'll go and I'll do the side because it's really easy to, um, at least I've found, um, it's easy to kind of get your fabric, you know, maybe one is, is not laying a flat on the other, so you've got a gap now, or it's gone crooked on you, or something like that as you're sewing. So I like to pin all around. I start with those seams and then I do the straps. I go around the, you know, and, and go around those curves and then back to the other straps. Just making sure everything lays flat. Um, particularly if you're like me, you don't have a ton of space to cut things out. So it's easy to make some errors when you're cutting things out. If it's off by a little bit, eighth inch, whatever, like it's not a big deal. You can still put it together and it's just fine. But this step in particular really helps because if you rely on those raw edges and you don't do this sort of, you know, laying it flat and making sure that um, all is well, then you can have a hot mess in a hurry. So I like to make sure it's all flat, and then I'm also going to pin around these legs as well. Now with the legs, these are going to be um, an open crotch sort of thing. So it's going to have snaps, like you would see, you know, with any sort of baby stuff that you would buy in the store, like at Carter's or whatever. It's going to have those snaps. Farmhouse does sell those snaps. They are by... Um, Oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Where are my snaps? It's a good question. I was using them the other day. They're by Snap Setter. Um, I highly recommend them. They remind me just look like those ones from Carter's or, or whatever. Oh my gosh, my... I am going to sneeze. My eyes are going to water. <laughs> Hold on. I have, uh, I've been having some inflammation in my head, and I think it's due to my thyroid. For the longest time, I thought I had bad allergies, but I don't think I do. I think it's, I have, I have a thyroid issue, and I think that it's due to my thyroid. So, I've been going down the road of trying to figure out what to do about it. 
Anywho, that's a whole other segue. So at this point, okay, I'm going to sew with those previous stitches facing up that are securing my piping down. Again, if you don't have piping on here, there, then that is just an easier step for you. I'm going to keep my piping foot on. Well, it's not a piping foot. It's a zipper foot that I like to use. This camera just shut off, so I hope it just it was filming the before it had shut off. It's going to be a hot mess. So I'm just going to go around the top as I've done previously. Another thing about if you are a brand spanking new beginner not doing the piping is that it makes this step um, easier. You don't have to be quite as exact with your, you know, going on top of your previous stitches because you don't have previous stitches. The thing about it is if you don't do um, the piping though, the only spot that you really want to try to be um, exact, I mean, do your best because like it's, you know, as you practice, like you're going to get better with seam allowances and lining things up and it just, it comes with practice. Um, which is what I'm, I'm trying to say is about the piping and not to be discouraging, but these things come with practice, keeping seam allowances even and all that sort of stuff and just handling fabric through a machine. Um, but what I'm trying to say, gosh, is, uh, sorry, my inflammation in my head is just really going. Um, what I'm trying to say is, even if you are a brand spanking new beginner, do your best with the seam allowances, particularly around these shoulder straps. Because if you get your seam allowances off, now no one's going to come and, you know, there's, no, there's going to be no fashion police at your door, but it's going to be a, a little bit of an eyesore. And that's okay. A lot of my stuff, particularly in the beginning, were a little bit of an eyesore. And that's fine. That's part of the process. But just kind of like a heads up, um, particularly around these shoulder straps, you want to be as even with your seam allowances as you can to keep them the same. That way, when you put the shoulder straps together, they're the same width. Does that make sense? It's quite easy to get off. Like if you're not paying attention or, if, or, or whatever, it's, it's a little easy to get off and then you can be you know off by a quarter or a half inch and they just don't look, like I said, it's okay, we all have done it, but just something to be aware of. Things to strive for. I hope I'm getting my point across okay without sounding too terrible. I'm not the best with my words. Alright, so we are done with the top. I am going to switch my foot back to just the regular sewing foot before we do the bottom. And we are almost done at this point. This thing comes together really fast. It's been um, about 45 minutes for me so far. Of course, I'm trying to talk through it as I go and pay attention to cameras. So it's a little bit longer than it usually takes. That's all right. Okay, so the bottom is going to be easier because since I didn't put piping on the bottom, you definitely could do piping on the bottom if you wanted to. I just didn't want to. So, um, you're going to start from one leg. It doesn't matter. At least in my case, if I didn't do piping, it doesn't matter if you do it on the the lining side or the outside, whatever. And you're just going to go up these leg holes. Line these back, this fabric back up. And then you want to make sure to stop, you know, like a half an inch or whatever seam launch you're doing away from the, the next turn, you know, like before you turn. You don't want to go all the way to the edge and then not have a seam allowance there. I'm 
so you can see here I was off when I was cutting but that's okay it'll go right into the seam allowance and it's better to have your fabric in your garment um, like laying nice and flat so you don't have bunches than to then to line up these two edges and, and take that quarter inch because that quarter inch is going to transfer into a like uh, the fabric being uneven. Does that make sense? <laughs> One day it's going to be so nice to have all those cutting tables and have everything laying really nice and flat. And oh, my bump is run out. All right. It's going to be so nice. It's going to happen one day, one day. I did have a um, very nice sewing space in one of our homes. Uh, it was the first home we bought after we were married. And there in the, the house had a, uh, it was like a oversized four car garage with a sort of like a mother-in-law suite or whatever above it. So there was like a kitchenette, a full bathroom, um, closets. It was around a thousand square feet and I was just living it up. And um, we were only in that house. We were only in that house for about 10 months. I was only in the sewing space. I mean, there was less than that because we had to kind of Oh, there goes the evaluation. But um, because we had to kind of like renovate, we don't buy we don't buy like moving ready houses. <laughs> so we had to do some renovations to the house, and then we we put in all these built-ins into the sewing space, and um, I was living it up. I probably sewed in there for um, I don't know six months or so. I mean, I I busted out so many dresses for myself. Um, I did some heirloom baby stuff, even though we, we were not in the space of having kids back then. And just I just enjoy the heirloom and, and stuff. Um, and I did several quilts, like I did a couple queen size quilts. And it was just, it was really nice being set up. You know, and you can just be way more efficient. You're, you're, um, while you're working, it's more enjoyable. Um, your stuff comes out better, just the whole nine yards. It's just, <laughs> it's so nice being set up and having space to do things properly. We'll get back there with the family house. I'm so excited. My sewing space in the family house is going to be somewhere around like 1,400 square feet. I am super excited about it. All right, where was I? All right, so let me just backtrack a little bit with my new bobbin. And that's where we are. So what we have done, we have done um, stitching all along the neckline. Okay, so from one, from that other center, uh, that side seam to this side seam, all along the neckline, all along the straps, has been sewn together, right sides together. And then also um, these pants, like all from one side seam don't you know don't sew up your side seams you're gonna have that open you're gonna go from one side seam all the way around the legs to the other side seam now you're going to get your scissors and kind of I like to put some clips along the crotch because it's a little bit of a curve it just helps um, when your little one's wearing it to be a little bit more comfy and, and look nicer. And then the corners, I like to just clip the corners off like so, so that they make a prettier corner. They don't have all that fabric that's trying to be shoved into a corner, you know what I mean? So, um, you'll see when I turn these right sides out. And again, with this crotch, I just like to put a couple of clip marks. Of course, don't go through your stitches. <laughs> But yeah, when I turn this right sides out, you'll see that um, just having less fabric there makes it a better, a better corner, a better point. You're not jamming all the fabric into a little point that makes it look bulky. So what you're going to do is you're going to, oh, you also need to trim up. My kids are back. I don't know if you just heard that or not. <laughs> um, but you're also going to trim up the all these curves around the neckline 
and I, I once again I like to um, go to those corners and just cut along them like so. So I'm going to do all of that in a hurry because I hear them. And we are almost done with this. I told you it's a very fast make. Um, and it's one of those you keep in your, you know, you make it once, you learn some stuff, you make it again, you learn some more, and eventually you're going to just bust it out. Um, there is absolutely no shame in making mistakes. That, at least for me, is how I learn. I'm continually making mistakes all the time, and that's fine. <laughs> that's all well and dandy. Generally, I don't make the same mistake twice because, you know, it sticks with you. I'm here. Are you talking? Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, can you, Henry, I got Audrey's interview in front Yeah. I'm gonna help. Oh no, how is the park? Are you tired? Oh, are you tired? We got one more step. Kind of. At least on the sewing machine. We have one more step on the sewing machine. Isn't that nice? That's for you. Alright, so we're going to reach through now that we've done all of our clipping and everything. <laughs> we're going to reach through, Henry, and we're going to flip it right sides out. Okay? And we are, you know, you're going to go through and get all your straps out. Can you help me? And then we've got one more step on the machine, and I think at that point I can kind of just walk you through the finishing work. It's not that much. And then you're done with the whole shebang. Don't eat your legs. Henry, don't eat your legs. Alright, so this is... Where's my pointer tool? Okay, don't help. Here's my pointer tool. So this is that little tool. If you've watched my other videos, you've probably seen it. Um, it's just really handy for pushing... Um, corners out, as you can see. Alright, so I've got all my corners pushed out. I'm going to give it a really quick ironing. Um, we're about 10 minutes from nap time, so I need to wrap this up. Yeah, I'm just going to give it a quick look around the legs as well as the um, neckline just to kind of get everything to lay down and look nice. If you find that there's any pulling around your neckline, um, any of that stuff, that means that you didn't put enough clips into those curves. So just wherever there's some pulling, go back in those areas and put some more clips and then that will allow your fabric to release and not be pulled on. So, this is a little trick of, it's CC Johnny as well as um, Taylor, CC Taylor. It's a nice little trick that they have. So, you're going to finish this side seam by putting it together, okay? Right sides together. You've got every turn, everything turned out, you know, so you've got a right side here and you've got a right side here. And you're going to put those together. I like to put a pin at the top. Of course, I've got piping. If you don't have piping, that's fine. Just line up that, um, that, that seam up there. And what I like to do is I like to start on my lining side. And I'll just start... I can hear the nap time needing to come on. Um, but I like to start kind of more at the leg area because you're going to have a little bit of hand sewing and I rather the hand sewing be at the leg area I feel like it's less likely to get tugged on and it's easier to conceal so here is my leg um, seam that I'm lining up and I'm going to start like I said sewing on the lining side so I've got this is my leg down here so I'm going to start sewing a little bit like this, all right? Because um, then I'll have my gap. You'll see there's going to be a gap 
towards the bottom of the... Alright, so I'm going to start sewing... Get that together again. I'm going to start sewing at the bottom of the leg. That's just my preference. Um, and it's going to kind of... You're going to kind of turn your garment inside out a little bit as you go around. Um, so you're going to go, you know, bottom of the leg, on the lining, at least that's how I like to do it. And then at this point I am going over that seam onto the garment fabric, that outside fabric, going up here. And you can see that my garment is kind of turning inside out as I'm doing that which is the nature of how to finish this. It's just, that's just what's going to happen. Um, that's, you're doing it. You're, you're not doing anything wrong. That's how it's going to work is you're going to kind of turn it right side out or inside, inside out <laughs> as you do this. It's a little bit of a cool trick. So here I've gone up that garment fabric. I'm pulling my pin out. And here you can see I'm at the top of that side seam because I'm going over where my um, piping is and I'm just going to continue now I'm back onto my lining make sure that the garment that's on the inside of here is not going to get stuck into this into this seam right here that would be a hot mess um, but yeah, you're just going to keep sewing down. Now you want to stop and leave a little bit of a gap. How long you leave the gap is more for you to hand sew, but also uh, if you don't leave a big enough gap, then it's going to be really hard to turn your fat, your garment right side out again. So um, I would say like three inches or something is probably good. Back, makes it a back stitch and then come out of there. Um, and then you're just going to pull your garment, easy does it, right sides out. And it's just a very cool little way to finish this off. So there you have it. That's all the machine uh, sewing. So at this point, I'm just going to walk you through the rest of it so I can go off and uh, do nap time. You're going to um, you're going to hand sew this gap together. Uh, I like to use a stitch. I believe it's called the ladder stitch, but it it look at the other. Um, either CC Taylor or Johnny that I've done in the past you can look at the timestamps to know where I've done those hand finishings and you can I walk you through how to do it on the other the other Johnny so um, that's what I like to do just to close up that gap so you're gonna need to do that and then you're gonna need to put whatever closures in um, there are ways to make this reversible since it is fully lined uh, you're gonna have to be mind if you want to do that you're gonna be mindful of your closures so you're going to do like a buttonhole and then a double button or something like that. Alternatively, you could do um, the snaps that are snaps that I I love those things. Like I can't find my jar of them right now. They're floating around here somewhere in this hot mess of the sewing corner. But I love those things. They you can rip them open. You don't have to worry about them ripping your fabric. You just it's the same as the Carter ones or any of the store bought ones. So you can use those for the shoulders. But you're gonna have to put some sort of um, closures on your shoulder as well as your pant legs and that way you can have easy access for diaper changes or for potty training or, or whatever um, but yeah it's an easy little make and I guess for potty training you wouldn't need it but for diapers you definitely need some of that there's so many different embellishments you can do on this again don't let it um, don't like if you have a little girl by all means still pull out CC Johnny for her. It's a great little make for the fall with the long pants. You could do some really sweet buttons down here. Sorry, you could do some really sweet buttons down here or across here or some, you know, machine embroidery, hand embroidery. I mean, you, you name it. You could do whatever little embellishments to make it your own. But that's how it comes together. Quick and easy. 
and I am off. So I appreciate y'all for watching. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below, and I will do my best to answer them. And I always appreciate y'all for watching, and I hope to catch y'all next time. Thanks, guys.